Mention Haiti, and this is what you'll likely hear. From poverty, natural disaster, now political violence. Every report about Haiti has to include the line that it's the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere. But hold on for a second. Something's missing in this conversation, right? We need to be all thinking about the relationship of what we're calling poverty in Haiti and the relation to the richness of the rest of the world. And, and how did the rest of the world get so rich? Let's start with France. Imagine if you were enslaved and after fighting for your independence, you were forced to spend the next couple of generations paying compensation to those who colonized you. Reparations for slaveholders is a new one for me. That is exactly what happened to Haiti. This is punishment uh, for their unwillingness to remain under the yoke of slavery. In 1697, France and Spain ended a war with each other by dividing up the Spanish colony Hispaniola. Through the labor of enslaved indigenous and black people, Saint-Domingue became the world's most profitable colony, exporting sugar, coffee, and indigo. Enslaved people in Saint-Domingue suffered some of the harshest and cruelest slave punishments in the entire Atlantic world. Life expectancy was extremely low, such that at the moment of the Haitian Revolution breaking out in August of 1791, the vast majority of enslaved people had only been on the island for two or three years. They were from whatever nation that they had been captive and, and brought over, and they basically said no. Self-liberated Africans led the Haitian Revolution and ended ended slavery in present-day Haiti and the Dominican Republic. After 12 years of fighting the French colonial power, which had tried to reintroduce slavery, the formerly enslaved people of Saint-Domingue officially declared their independence and renamed their country Haiti. Many countries, including the United States, refused to recognize Haitian independence in fear of slave rebellions. And France refused to accept Haiti's independence unless Haiti paid 150 million franc as so-called compensation for lost revenues from slavery. That was around 10 times Haiti's annual budget. But Haiti couldn't decline the indemnity request since the French came ready for war, carrying more than 500 cannons on their ships. Articles from that period show that the French king knew the Haitian government wouldn't be able to repay the debt which decimated Haiti's economy. Haitians had extremely high taxes and most of the tax revenue was paid for the indemnity. This left the education system, public infrastructures, and healthcare underdeveloped. Agricultural land was also depleted to grow cash crops that paid for the debt but couldn't feed the country. It took Haiti 122 years to pay off its debt and required taking high interest loans. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy to say that Haiti is poor and Haiti must be poor. And I think the better question whenever a people, an entire people is characterized as poor with this word is to say, not why are they poor, but why aren't you? But it's not just the French who have played a role in Haiti's misery. So the United States has intervened in Haitian affairs quite a lot. President Moïse's assassination in 2021 left some Haitian officials calling for U.S. intervention. But not everyone agrees. The only way that that could ever even have a fruitful outcome would be if it was because they were in dialogue with the Haitian people for the first time. Because that is not what usually happens. That's not what happens at all. They dialogue with the people claiming power and some negotiation is struck between those vying for power and the United States government. There's a lot of people saying, no, we don't want the United States to come and intervene again because this is again a repetition of history. The history that Professor Doubt is talking about involves the United States 19 year occupation of Haiti an occupation that killed thousands of Haitians. Following the assassination of Haiti's president in 1915, U.S. President Woodrow Wilson's administration invaded Haiti to protect U.S. investments. Then, they forced the election of a new Haitian president who would protect American interests in the country. Racist and fear-mongering rhetoric was used to justify the move. The occupation ensured that the U.S. prioritized its own interests in Haiti over what was best for Haitians. The U.S. occupation ended in 1934, after local dissent and rebellion grew too costly for the U.S. to control. But even after the occupation, the United States continued to play a role in the internal affairs of Haiti. In 1957, the U.S. government threw its support behind a Haitian dictator, François Duvalier. Duvalier and his successor, a.k.a. his son Jean-Claude, ate up aid from the United States in exchange for their strong anti-communist stand at the height of the Cold War. Haitian uprisings ended Duvalier Jr.'s rule and led to Haiti choosing its democratically elected leader, Jean-Bertrand Aristide, in 1990. 
But within a year, Aristide's government was toppled by a coup. Not only was one of the leaders of the coup on the CIA's payroll, but the US had set up and funded the Haitian military and National Intelligence Service, which both played key roles in the coup. Ousted Aristide returned to his second presidency in 2001, and again was forced out of office by a coup that he claimed the US had orchestrated. And after that, President Obama's cabinet pressured a Haitian presidential candidate to withdraw in 2010. We see reports coming out of various civil society organizations saying that Haitians have lost faith in the electoral process because it doesn't reflect their actual concerns. And that brought us to the 2016 Haitian presidential election, where late President Moise was elected with with an extremely low voter turnout, but US backing. In February 2021, Moise refused to step down at the end of his term. The US once again backed him while thousands of Haitian protesters took to the streets. Many Haitians are saying, we want to try actual Haitian democracy where the Haitian people, not just the elite and the bourgeoisie and the business interests get to have a say and determine the direction and future of the country. It's clear that Haiti's poverty and political instability has long been influenced and shaped by foreign players. So knowing this, where does Haiti go from here? We have never been able to see what could happen in this particular black country without meddling and interference. We should try something new in the United States and that is back off and back away and let the Haitian people determine their own future.